大家好，呃、uh, ，Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us and for this、um, presentation. And、uh, very, it's my pleasure to be here and today. And、uh, again,、uh, I'm, my name is Yan Tong Zhao. I'm from Chicago, and with ha-、uh, Haverson Partners. And so, it's very glad to be here, especially in Shanghai and on this building here in、uh, Jinma Tower. Uh, the reason is back almost 20 years ago, in、uh, 1993 through 1995, and when I was with、uh, SOM in Chicago, I worked on this project, and also and some of our colleagues, and also at the meeting here, the structural engineer one is Mark Sakishan at this event, and also and Ahmed Abdel Razak, he's over there. And then, this, and the architect, and one of the key architects working on this、um, project, and other than Adrian Smith, and、uh, it's、um, Peter Westmandel. He's sitting right over there, and that's my pleasure to to see him, to see all of them at this event. And some of them we haven't seen each other for years. And、uh, now we're talking talking about the development of tall buildings. Actually, when we work on this building, Jin Mao Tower, that's It's a very innovative, innovative structure because、um, at that time, and the tallest building in the world was Sears Tower, and the other one, Hancock Center,、uh, in Chicago, and it also uh, uh, New York is a World Trade Center. So basically, there's、uh, people at that time have a、uh, believe or the envision that in the future, tall building will be either will be steel and a tube. Uh, whether it's a moment frame tube and you know、uh, bracing tube, so that was、uh, in people's mind. But when we work on this product in and、um, here in China and steel and it's very expensive and try to find a con-、uh, concrete solution, so that was challenge, but、uh, it worked. So again, that、uh, building is a con- basically a concrete car. And a major column, you can see very big columns, eight columns here, and they're connected by all triggers, and it's three different levels, and then, and everybody can see it. Now I'm talking about the、um, uh, the、uh, development, and of,、uh, actually we we were all、uh, work at、uh, SOM at that time, and Bob Harrison started the firm 16 years ago. So we are talking about a, for, a few projects, and we work now. And these are a few,、uh, three examples I'm going to use, and you probably saw two of them in this morning when Adrian and presented. And I'm talking about the tall building design, and then we're talking about a super tall building design. And the difference between super tall and the regular tall buildings is that the building is you can treat it as a structural engineer, you can treat it as a cantilever and a vertical cantilever, and. So this、uh, is not only going to carry itself weight; it's also carry the lateral load. We know lateral load is a seismic load and wind, but for super tall, it's basically controlled by wind, including this building, Jinma Tower. And so, to control, to make it effective and optim- optimize the structure, there basically a few concerns. And number one is tall building. Principle, and we're going to talk about that one. The other one is a structural system form and wind engineering. And Kerman talked about the wind engineering,、uh, you know, earlier. So there are some part that maybe repeat or skip that. And talking about the principles, we talk about a four major principle for effective tall building design. The first is a spread vertical elements. Over a broad base, like this one, and then second one is to carry overturning and then gravity loads on the same element. If you can use the same element, and then you don't have to pay the the, the premium for the lateral system. And number three is、uh, connect as、uh, connect vertical element and as rigidly as possible. So this is like a white flange. If you consider this building section, you connect them 
uh, connect both flanges by the web and rigidly so that they can work together and can be effective. And this number four, and resist leather loads with axial force, not flexure. So if you want to make the building effective and do as much as possible to make it just carry the axial load, not try to bend it, because it's going to be costly. It's hard to make it work. So this is the summary. And when they work, you know, you, you can do a very effective structure based on the principle, but you also need to work with architects, like Adrian mentioned this morning. It's not just architects. It's definitely not just structure engineer. You need to work together so that you can get most effective building. For most of the tall building you can check, it may satisfy maybe two or three of these principles. But to make it very effective, if you can satisfy all these principles, that will be a very good building. And this, this one is Russia Tower. It's just, that's a 600 meter tower in Russia. And we worked on this project a few years ago with Norman Foster out of London. And the shape of the building, and then inside is the core, and then with uh, three wings. This is the architectural plan. And this is a sketch, an architect, uh, structural sketch in, by Bob Harrison, and showing the structural options, the, the concept, and the structural model. And then from this elevation, we can check. And then first principle, and then you spread the base as wide as possible. And then the second principle is to carry the gravity load and ladder load at the same time. So for those sloped column, and it's carry gravity load and also uh, ladder load. And then again, there, the number three is uh, link them together rigidly. And number four, and then you carry the axial load, not bending moment. This one with a minimum bending moment. This one mainly is a composite structure, but for the, all these diagonal columns, the, these are concrete columns. So every co column is uh, under compression and no tension in it. So it's very effective. These are the architectural models. And just the size at the bottom is a football site, you know, football field size. It's uh, over 120 meters. And this one actually started the construction a few years ago, but it stopped uh, because of the economy, some other reasons. But this concept, we can still use this concept to build an effective structure. Uh, the next topic is about, it's about a structural system form. And we talk about the wind engineering. Because for, to make this building effective, one is to increase, make the, the stiffness of the building for overturning as, a, as a big as possible. The other one is to reduce the load, the wind load. As, you know, uh, for the, for what I'm showing here is a different form. We did some study. There are two types of study on the, on the top. Actually, it shows the f for the same function area, floor area, and with the same um, cross-section area, vertical element. So we'll assume this is the tube system, moment frame. And how effective and the building is for the stiffness. So on the left, and showing the triangular is pretty effective. And but to consider the wind sails, and the second, and then showing the square, and then it's more effective. And also for the design right now, because the architects, they want more open space. They, they don't want too, ma too many columns. So a uh, mega column become uh, pretty popular at this moment. So the, at the bottom, and showing, let's assume you put all these vertical elements at the corner, it doesn't matter what shape. It turns out the triangular one is much more effective it's almost like twice as effective as the last one. 
and then just compare these three. So that if you use the first one as a base and the second one in a cruise form, is a, you you need 26 percent of a material to get an equivalent stiffness. And a diamond or square one, you need about 30 percent more material. So to be just for the shape itself, rectangular is much more effective. And this part, I should skip this part, because uh, Kerman also mentioned this, right? So with the sharp corner, you get more wind load. But if you can smooth the corner, make it rounded corner, you can, re you can reduce the wind load. And this is almost a summary. So with a rounded corner, and also tapered. Vertically, if you make the, the building smaller and smaller, and you can reduce the load. And also the building orientation, and again, Kermit mentioned about this one. If you rotate the, the, the building, and then you can find a optimal position to resist for wind load. And another one is if you can make the, the edge rough, right? That like, as a corner, you make the vented corner. And then all these can reduce uh, the wind load. And then everybody familiar with this building and the Adrian talk about uh, this morning, the early session. And we work with ASGG on this project for the competition. We developed uh, the, the structural concept for this competition. And then we won this competition. So this is the, this one is just based on this analysis, on a study. Again, this is, uh, this study with, uh, actually we work together with ASGG, the architect, and also the wind, and uh, wind ex expert, uh, RWDI. So it shows the core and also the split mega column on the corner. And then, you, so this one, basically satisfied all these principles, four principles, and it also applied uh, wind effects, and uh, with the minimum wind effects. Uh, the last example is one Dubai, and Adrian talked about this one also, and it's like 2008, uh, there was a competition we and work uh, with uh, ASGG and developing, and this is a structural concept. And these, in, in distance, it looks like three columns, actually, it's three buildings. And then connected use the sky bridges. And not only for architectural features, structurally, those towers must be connected. Otherwise, it won't work for individually. And I, you've probably seen this already this morning. And the sky bridges and on the on the upper right corner is that you look up uh, from the center of this region and then see uh, what it looks like. And again, this is the, lo this is the location and Burj and Dubai is on the right side and right hand side. And that's the location. This is the footprint and three different buildings. You know, almost like here in Jinmao and um, World Financial Center and uh, Shanghai Tower. And these are the uh, structural uh, floor planning and floor framing and at different level. The, uh, the, here shows the height. The tallest, the tallest uh, tower here is uh, 1,008 meters, so one, over one kilometer. And the shortest one is 185 meter is taller than um, the Shanghai Tower. But and at the very beginning the, the competition when when we work on the competition the tallest one is a six hundred eighty six. After the competition start to work on this project and the, in the end even the the tallest one is is about the same height as the shortest one. And there are two different skin to make that work, and uh, actually it's uh, 3A, skim 3A and 3B, and 3A is more effective, very effective, 
but architecturally it may not be that nice. So in the end, and we used N3B. And this shows um, those diagonal struts. Uh, I should mention that one. Actually, um, other speaker, and Kerman, and spent, I believe, over a year working on this project when he was with us at Harrison. And these are the analysis. And, okay. And then also, this is the comparison when one use just one tower and also link them together. So once you link them together, it's very effective. So the drift reduced from, let's say, 1 and to 1.6. And these are the construction sequence of the sky bridge. And you use the cable and then put the, the bridge over there. And another thing about wind engineering is now we have a three buildings together, not just one. So one building is going to affect the other one. So the building in front, the taller building actually going to affect the one, its neighbor, so it's going to make the load higher. So that you have to do at the wind tunnel. So there's a wind tunnel test on those buildings. And I also rotate the three buildings to adjust the position. So that's find original position of the three tower after you rotate uh, 240 degrees and become very effective. So th the final position is about 240 degree position. Uh, even structurally it works well, but there's another issue. And on the top, if the occupy the floor, you can still feel the vibration. There's a, a moving perception issues. So at Based on the recommendation by the uh, wind experts, so we have to apply the damper on top of the building. And this one we're using the tuned pendulum damper. And on top of the building, and then you can actually, you can see the size, the height of the damper are quite different. And the topper one is get a higher acceleration, and so you will have a height, so that the cable in that the damper get longer. So it's, but it's just proportioned to the building. This is how it looks like. Uh, again, this is the damper. Uh, just a summary here. And for tall building design, uh, if you involve in any of those projects, if you are architects, you can check structure engineer whether they follow this basic principle. If they can follow the principle, the structure itself can be very effective. And also, if they can determine the effective form and using the wind engineering study, so you can reduce the wind load. There's many different ways to reduce wind load. I'm just talking about the shape of the floor plan and the structure to reduce that. And these are the three examples. And thank you very much. And thank you.